Hello, everyone. This is John Burgos, and welcome to today's edition of Beyond the Ordinary Show. And God, today's topic is like so in my heart right now. There's such awareness or um, information coming in around it. And Sandra Walter has her finger on the pulse of what's going on. We were having a little bit of a conversation during our pre-call about time and timelines and how things are shifting, the fluctuation, and why it's happening. Um, And Sandra hinted a little tiny bit about it. I've had some personal experience with it also, and so the clarity that Sandra can bring in and the awareness um, and really equip us to really be in the flow of what's happening, but also empowered decisions that are coming up with this. So, again, it's going to be a phenomenal call. I am so excited about this because no one's really talking about it um, or kind of talking about it because it's so new. We're still trying to wrap our minds, our heads, our bodies, our hearts around it. Um, and, and Sandra is the ultimate way shower. So, again, I am super excited. I want to invite everyone listening tonight just to sit back and relax. Take this for you time. Try not to multitask, but really ingest um, and absorb and and allow yourself to receive this loving information that is here to uplift you. Um, and with that, some of you may be fam- not familiar with Sandra, so I'm going to read a little bit about her. So Sandra Walter is a way shore, and I have to add galore to that, by the way, ascension guiding gatekeeper. As an interdimensional liaison, Sandra assists awakened humans through writings, videos, and the deeply comprehensive Ascension Path online training class. Sandra shares information as a conduit to empower, inspire, and accelerate the ascension for humanity. Sandra is currently on mission in Mount Shasta, California, and on mission just serving everybody she touches. Um, It's such a pleasure to have you back, Sandra. Thank you for coming back on. Oh, absolute honor, John. Always enjoy our conversations. Thank you. Yeah, I do too. I want to dive into this. It's, you know what, before we get into the topic of timeline fluctuations, why don't we define it first? I would love it if you would um, bring perspective to what that means for you. Yeah, what I can, you know, the way this is presenting right now is maybe we can give people some framework why why it's happening right now so we you know right now we're receiving these very strong light code uh, almost like a bombardment flowing through cosmic stargate floodgates so all that stuff was opened last year it was a huge act of service to align these trinity stargates that aligned with the uh, the eclipse last august and these influxes are harmonic based even though they appear as vibrant light in our fields and visions a lot of people getting the flashing activity when they're meditating these incoming frequencies are delivered via plasma pulses it's the best way i can describe it it's actually a harmonic which is the flashing activity that we see when we meditate or we connect with the sun so these frequencies are activating crystalline templates in the New Earth grid system, and then Gaia responds by releasing corresponding fire letters, geometries, light codes, so she's actually emanating that stuff. So since we've been entering this dimensional shifting, consciousness shifting hot zone since last year, the incoming and outflowing codes have steadily increased, which is why it's so important to ground, you know, do your earthing, get your bare feet on the uh, on the ground and actually feel that um, because it assists with your 5D DNA strands to activate. And you can feel kind of high and blissy um, as you get into that zone and you become a conduit for those flows. Um, Now, the Trinity Stargate alignment began with last year's August uh, solar eclipse. And then all this transition to these higher trajectory collective timelines occurred with the solstice in December. So they were ongoing since the eclipse, but all of a sudden we kind of hit this locking mechanism where higher primary Christed timelines of ascension, a fancy title that just means a much higher trajectory for the collective is now available. So 
uh, you know, and gatekeepers can view that from that intergalactic perspective, as, as you will. But um, there's this there's this interdimension, interdimensional phase lock occurring of these cosmic stargates within our galaxy, Sun, Gaia, and everything's aligned for these ongoing expansive energetic events this year. But it allows for um, for us to become not just conduits of these plasma frequency pulses and the flashing activity, but we're also um, it's also changing the way that we experience time. So many of us have heard, and all the guidance has been coming in, that you know the the linear time experience is going to dissolve. And as we hit these higher trajectories, the primary Christed timelines, the way to identify them is they don't feel like timelines. Uh-huh. <laughs> so it's it's kind of interesting. It's like, how do you know if you're on a primary Christed timeline? It's like, well, your experience of linear time is getting funky. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's dissolving. It's getting oh, yeah. weird. It's not just Mandela effect, but it's like missing time, accelerated time slowing down time like it's all getting very pliable and and very elastic which is beautiful because it's one of our strongest lessons this year which is already presenting with the incoming and outflowing codes is our ability to experience time in a fluid nonlinear state we really have to surrender to this we enter a period where change overrides habit Now, it tends to irritate people who want to, you know, the reliable sameness, um, as well as those who cannot tolerate business as usual, but it is what it is. Activated DNA is attuning us. And again, it's DNA-based. You know, the whole dimensional shift is DNA-based. Your experience is DNA-based. That's how you project yourself into realities. So activated DNA is attuning us to a new experience of time. And it serves the ascension process to apply this lesson, you know, learn this lesson of fluid time right now, rather than trying to wrap your head around how am I going to do this, how am I going to, you know, walk between worlds. That has been the challenge of the ascension process for decades. You know, you're not alone in that. But we've had phases of this uh, this dimensional flux, these timeless linear time flux. And last year, there were some very strong windows of this pliable time experience as collective timelines dropped and shifted. Now, in this now, it becomes increasingly difficult to manage linear time. And it's again, it's not something that's like a problem to solve. It is what it is. It is what we're moving into. So, some may consider consider um, no planning as the solution to this anomaly, um, and there have been phases when no plans felt reasonable a day or a week here and there, like you just want to free yourself from from the linear experience altogether. However, the guidance in this now is to dive into the experience in order to master it. Yeah. So as way showers, we demonstrate how to navigate the waters of fluctuating time dynamics. We've experienced the creation windows in January already. It's been days, even hours, when everything's a go for creating and manifesting. You feel it all of a sudden, you're like, oh, this is one of those times, this is one of those moments, this is, <laughs> you know, when everything is aligned, go, go, go. And you, other days are for preparation, meditation, integrating, activating, can't get nothing done, less linear activities. But it teaches us, this is teaching us to be sensitive to the new energies, to to a new way of being by staying in the moment and maintaining the cosmic perspective that all is well, all is in flow, and the mastery level patience with ourselves and others who are, um, you know, trying to force the hand of time to create things. And, you know, time at this point is saying, "Mm -mm, not now. (laughs) <laughs> you know, and and the now time can feel trance-like. I've had those experiences certainly this month. You know, as I recover my body from 
from a car accident, all kinds of stuff. I've had some very trance-like experiences. And again, this is DNA attempting to migrate us to a new reality. So it requires this balance of surrender and focus, allowing the new to penetrate our psyche and dealing with any resistant thoughts or emotions which arise because it is part of the process. Does that make sense? Oh, it makes a lot of sense, and you're, like, so bringing light um, to my personal experiences as well because it's, you know, we have it as individuals, and we don't realize that other people may be going through some more experience because it's so unique. It's mm-hmm. so new. Um, so, yeah. yeah, what you're saying makes so much sense. It's it's really funny, Sandra, because in, in December, in the beginning of January, I was having experiences with people where I'd see them, and then they'd be, out of my presence for a day or two, but it would feel like months. And, and it wouldn't even feel like time. It, it would feel like it was a dream. Time didn't make sense yeah. yet. It felt like they were in a dream, and it was a dream that they were there, and now in, like, in some different awakened reality. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm having that, that same experience. And, you know, the when, when the ascension process was described to me, they were like, well, technically you're already in 4D and 4D used to experience this dream state. So the more that you align and, and pass through uh, that dimensional experience, the more you start recognizing, wow, it feels like a dream, you know, because that's how we used to experience mm-hmm. it. It's like, wow, it's a very dream state. And, and, and certainly the spiritual traditions have always described all of this as, you know, source just having a dream. But when it becomes... Uh, part of your 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 moment to moment experience of like whoa it's very fluid you know 5D is that kind of fluid state where you're just like whoa everything's just kind of morphing and and combining and separating and it's very it becomes very um liquid light you know very a very liquid light experience but I too have had that um, that experience where I I see people and I know that, you know, my old self knows them. I know that we've had interaction in the past, but, you know, I'll I'll be darned if I can recall that in the moment. You know, I'm just like, I know, I know this (laughs) being, you know, but and and maybe there, you know, it even happens with, like, dear friends where I'm like, what is that being's name? You know, because you start relating to people in, as light signatures rather than mm-hmm. identity. That's another thing that's that's disappearing right now is the sense of identity. That's becoming very strong for me, especially since having yet another near-death experience um, just a few weeks ago. It's just the, the identity is dropping away. And the more that you surrender to that, the more of this um, these higher dynamics can can present and even though this is a year to gather to express our experience of ascension and play with our co-creative power um it it also uh allows us to um, bring up and take a look at uh fears that you won't be available or in the right mood or remember someone's name or remember what you're supposed to talk about or even be capable of interaction you know all of that it, you got to let it go, you know, and we, we need to get together. And all of us, um, gosh, I had a, a gathering in Sedona last year, and the first thing I said to everyone is, I have no idea what I'm about to say or what I'm going to present today. And everyone laughed with the recognition of gratitude that everybody's in the same place, <laughs> you know, and, right. and that those old paradigm expectations have to be surrendered and we must demonstrate trust in the 5D flow because often when we're guided to connect, um, something much larger is at work and, and we, you know, you feel that in the moment. So we trust our hearts and we learn to receive and serve and create in this new light from moment to moment. It's literally training us for the new earth experience in a very palpable way where we start to recognize um, unity consciousness we we start to recognize ourselves as all one and the identity starts starts dropping away and the time dynamics start dropping away and you're we're literally learning how to um not just master that it's not control over a situation it's uh becoming part of it you know what i mean 
that makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, something that you touched on that I think it's, it's really important to, to hit home, just a reminder for everybody that's listening and to really pass it along is that we're not going through this alone. Several of us are experiencing this at the same time. Um, and it's, and that's why gathering in person, like you said, I believe is so important because these shared experience not only help to amplify the experience, but help us really navigate it in a different way. Right. And when we all exchange our, our stories and, you know, on the, on the grounded level, it looks like we're exchanging our stories and just getting it together. But on the, on the higher level, so much occurs when we get in, in the same physical space. It's kind of interesting. Um, uh, but, but the, the neutralization of old timelines or the linear, linear timelines, both personal and collective, is um, is pre- is presenting in a very strong way. You know, another side effect of this increased change over habit. You know, more change rather than habitual thing has to do with timelines. Um, there's like this. You might have noticed this kind of wavering state of the collective as the energies force us to choose timeline. Um, you know, there's like higher highs and lower lows in the, in the personal experience and the collective timeline fluctuation. Um, it, <laughs> you know, if you cannot or do not choose your experience, the fluctuation gets much worse. You know, habit wants a familiar experience and change demands a choice. So um, the, the frequencies coming in support change. You know, they are changing the magnetic fields of Gaia and your own consciousness to provide multiple dimensional experiences. So if you're having a, a roller coaster experience of daily ups and downs, you know, dramatic ups and downs in this new light, um, this is your mastery lesson presenting. It means that you haven't committed to creating a, a positive reality or you haven't created a ownership of where you want your trajectory to go. Uh, you might consciously choose your next step in your higher timeline, and, and but you need to align your heart, your actions, your words, moment by moment choices with it. So this is learning how to create in this new light, and that ends the wild fluctuation. Again, change, embracing change over uh, habitual behavior. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense, yeah. And what yeah. I had a personal experience regarding timeline, that it, it kind of blew me away. Um, and it mm. came out of the blue. And I want to share it because I'm wondering what's coming up with that because there's there's something that – well, let me share the experience, and, and your perspective will be amazing. So I was sitting at dinner with a friend, and we were talking, and all of a sudden I could see, like – I want to call it a potential thread because time didn't seem right, and I can see – sometimes potential threads and some are more lit up than others. And depending on choices, we'd have a lot of them or, or quite a few that are really trajectories as potentials, but a brand new one started to emerge like out of the left side of my body. I could see it being created. Mm -hmm. It was, it was so simple. I can feel like a new potential was being born that perhaps couldn't be born before because I was bringing in the limitations of my past into it. Um, And it, it couldn't resonate there, but I don't know. Have Have you experienced anything like that, or do you see new potentials being created in that way? Yeah, and this is this is again a side effect of this of this complete. I mean, it is an infusion of these five D dynamics coming in so strongly right now, and we are anticipating some very strong energetic uh, events that um, way showers and sensitives are feeling already. You know, we're already feeling that higher trajectory is about to present. And, um, and, and this, is, this is really beautiful, John, because you've described um, something that, that uh, many gatekeepers and, and, and grid workers have experienced too, where they're like, wow, this is a com- there's a completely new, you know, the new, new, uh, the completely different trajectory coming in for many of us. And this is actually a reflection of something that happened back in 2012. You know, since 
the um, since the dimensional shift in 2012, since the ascension of Gaia, you know, when Gaia created that new platform, we're completely different people. And, we, and we've slowly, you know, we've been given five years to kind of integrate and grok that concept. And now we're being delivered all of these higher trajectories that our higher self is just like taken off with. You know, the higher, the higher self is in charge. And as the, as the veil is thin and the magnetics change, you're starting to have these moments of personal revelation and collective revelation that show us, you know what, this is available now, that's available now. Completely different trajectory. And it's beautiful because, again, it challenges us to, to embrace change over habit. So the habit would be, well, I really thought I was going to create this. I really thought this is where I was going. And now this new thing is coming in, but I don't really know how to deal with that. I don't really know what it is. And, and yet it's there. So when you make a heart choice to explore it, you know, this is very similar to what I experienced, um, you know, with my, with my car accident. You know, complete endpoint, complete exit point, you know, star, star seed mission, complete, you have, you have the choice, you know, you can step out or embrace a completely different trajectory. And, you know, apparently my higher self chose a, a different trajectory and I'm still catching up to that and, and it's being revealed. But when, but the, but the revelation of what that higher trajectory is feels so expansive and so beautiful that that is the opening of these crystalline pathways to the new earth experience it's going to become very strong for a lot of way showers so when you see it presenting and it's so it's so funny that it presents in the most unusual of moments i've had that experience too just casually having a conversation with people and all of a sudden it's like this you know these giant gateways are opening and these higher trajectories and light and everything and you're like oh my goodness okay like do i do i carry on the conversation do i dismiss myself from this conversation (laughs) do i have to pay attention to it you know and it's just kind of like well there's so much going on but again it's a it's a demonstration of unity consciousness it's a demonstration of that simultaneous many things happening at once which is the thinning of the veils you know because the the glue uh, uh, that was holding together you know the magnetics that was were holding um, the separation of bandwidth the separation of realities is dissolving right now so you're seeing the higher trajectory and the lower trajectory at the same time so it's kind of interesting a, a very um, amplified experience of walking between worlds, as it were. Does that make sense? That, that does. So, so yeah. Sandra, how do you recommend people that we, uh, people, include me in the people category, mm. um, navigate this? What's the invitation and and how do we, I want to say create, but it's beyond, how do we live as humans in this? How do we gracefully ease into this and not have to go through the chaos and the suffering of the confusion that it may cause? Yeah, for some, the, the kind of fluctuating stress of these new energies is simply misalignment with the higher trajectory of the higher self. So that's a moment-by-moment moment phase lock with the, mag- with the magnetics of the heart center. It's, it's consistent um, conscious uh, choice. to, And I know that gets thrown around a lot, so let me just kind of dive into it. Moment by moment, we we are becoming hyper aware of how much we create our reality. And again, that's a, a huge catchphrase for the for the new age community. However, um, we're getting a very palpable experience of that. You know, there are multiple and, and consistent uh, trajectories for your ascension, for your experience. But when we be, when we um, become aware of the holographic projection of ourselves and our reality, you know, in, into these collective realities, we're able to uh, to to start engaging with creation uh, in a whole new way. And, and you know, if we can remember to reflect the heart's choice in thought, word, and action from moment to moment, 
the um, you know, this vibrational mismatch that's going on with the timeline timelines right now grows wider with the plasma influxes. That's what the bifurcation is about. But it's best to deal with your personal change, personal choices to change versus uh, the personal comfort of habit, um, the, the challenges of that right now. You know, now's the time to deal with that. And for a lot of people, the, the struggle comes with... Um, with not engaging with that. You know, the struggle comes from the resistance to change. And, you know, you thought you had a grip on change, you ain't, you ain't seen nothing yet. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> so it's, and it is being, it's not just being in the flow, because a lot of people are like, well, you just have to get in the flow. It's like, yeah, but we're also learning how to become conscious creators. You know, we're literally getting into mm-hmm. that creator state of consciousness where it's like, honey, you can create whatever you want. You know, and for some people, they're like, I don't know what that is. You know, I just want to back away and let source take the wheel, which is wonderful. But it's also, you know, you're projecting into this reality for a reason. So if, you know, and it's just the consistent uh, reminders of like, look, this is going to be a very rapid uh, change as these timelines fluctuate. So, you know, from the true essence of source itself, uh, you know, what's available now? Because it's going to be different. You know, the choices that you made last year maybe not, maybe aren't applicable any longer. Mm-hmm. And our ability to let go of like, well, I really knew, I really thought I knew where my ascension process was going and then, you know, something completely different presented. So, I mean, it, and for for me, Meditation and moment by moment alignment is key. You know, it's it's one thing to kind of navigate through the collective timelines and be in service and everything, but you're also honoring your own personal experience and hopefully delighting in it and being excited about it as the energies change. You know, but I'm I'm noticing in my own journey like my heart is not diminished by others' behavior or what's going on around me, even my own behavior. (laughs) I have noticed like even my my lower self behavior can't step down the frequency that's coming through my heart any longer. You know, it's Mm -hmm. like I can't screw it up. I'm in a steady, divinely neutral state aligned with this consistent presence of love light even during challenges, even during, you know, walking between worlds. And my ability to forgive and express gratitude are not diminished by the external or the internal world. It's like you're becoming your own stargate to the the new earth experience. So there's this instantaneous perception of truth and love and goodness and these qualities are are obvious and brighter and and revealed and the lesser creations and distortions are also obvious however they don't have any charge or influence on my journey anymore that was a huge lesson for me all all through um, January you know dealing with the car crash and why it happened all that stuff you know it's just uh, for, and for me, this um, eclipse window between the August eclipse and the uh, eclipse at the end of January has been transitional because I, I have co-created it with my higher levels as such. It's to call mm-hmm. forth the new experience, the new Earth experience as a palpable reality for all concerned is the the highest truth that I can express right now, you know, and that's when, when your focus is on that, all, you know, everything, all of your creations and everything that you would like to manifest comes through. Yeah, and Does I think what you're sense? talking about, yeah, and, and part of what I think what you're relating to is, and, and the peace and the freedom that you're experiencing is really about a letting go of attachment, yeah, in a new way, in a new way. In a, yeah, because, and, and totally in a new way, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it does take a good deal of of surrender, and for some for some people, surrender still means kind of giving up on trying to create everything, and I don't feel that is the point. I feel that the universe has our backs and that the influxes will be undeniable and that change over habit will get intense for the collective. But I feel that our, um, and even as we go through this losing identity uh, um, thing that's going on, this has become very strong for me. And again, as with every phase of the journey, it's really strong one day, and then the next day you're like, oh, I've got to you know, take care of business. And then you'll get a couple hours where it's like, I am not anything that I was a moment ago. You know, it's just, um, you know, we're all navigating through this, and I feel the more that we share our stories, the more that we, we can laugh about it and hopefully bring some light and joy into the experience instead of, you know, some people getting a little cray-cray with them, um, <laughs> with little, you know, because yeah. they're because they're trying, they're trying to connect it to something that they understand. And if there's anything that that I have I have completely understood with this journey is that source cannot be comprehended by the mind that we are given <laughs> with right now. You know, it's uh-huh. like please let it go. You know, anyone trying to like define truth and source, it's like. Yeah, from, you know, maybe through the body, um, you just can't grok that. But um, but the concept of identity, this is kind of, I feel like this kind of rolls into our conversation with timelines and fluctuating trajectories, is the, the glue-like magnetics which held the structures for our old identity, our way of being and form, break apart during a dimensional shift. You know, we've been warned about this, that the bandwidth, the frequency, which hold dimensional realities in place are dissolving. And they're just revealing other options. It's not like, oh, my God, my reality has gone away. It's like, honey, went, went away five years ago. You're just catching up. You know, the, the <laughs> dynamic. <laughs> the, the di- <laughs> so it's like, you know, when, you, when you're like, oh, how come no one told me? It's like, just trust, trust, you know. The dynamics which held the old identity as a truth and the illusion of separation are breaking apart with the codes and the light structures which are flowing through the stargates right now. And if you're sensitive, you're feeling it. You know, some days I walk around and I'm like, I am too high on these frequencies to have linear interaction. You know, I, there's, there's a lot of my linear time that is spent going, I probably shouldn't talk to anybody right now. <laughs> you know? Like you're just so expanded and so and and it's great you know it's wonderful you get so expanded and so um you know the dmt starts starts, starts kicking in and i oh, yeah. you know i close my eyes and i see these expansive new earth landscapes i'm like i don't know if i should talk to anybody right now you know? no you totally should no one needs to kill that buzz yeah <laughs> i know like wow you know and and it's such a buzz kill too when you you know, you're you're like, oh, but I need to go to the store or mail this package or deliver this whatever, and you're like, no, you're no. in that state, you know, walking down the street and somebody will come up with like their issues and you're like, honey, I gotta go, you know, it's just it, it because, and and in that state because you feel like such a conduit of the of source and the new light and you feel like the gateway walking around, it becomes very difficult to define oneself in those moments. Um, and, and as this goes on, you know, I just had to record some kind of promotional videos for some upcoming festivals and I, I'm, I'm sitting there and, you know, it's just, it's been like a very bizarre day, but you got to get the linear thing done. You know, you turn on the camera and I'm like, I, wow, how do you even, you know, they, they want you to define yourself and who you are and everything. And I have, <laughs> I have challenges with even saying I am Sandra Walter and, it, it, uh, mm-hmm. it, which is funny, you know, most people can relate to that right now that are in the light tribe. But um, I was like, well, maybe I can phrase, you know, I am, so what I ended up saying was, I am currently in service as an ascension guide, you know, and a way shower and a gatekeeper, because that's what I'm doing in this reality right now. You know, at, but really, my light signature of the you know the the geometry that is the container for all of my fractals, it feels more applicable than titles or names. Yeah. And 
it, it just seems like we're finally evolving out of the identification with past life or galactic titles, you know, all that, um, you know, kind of flotsam of of what we've been going through for the last few decades. Um, it feels like it's still it's still necessary to use these tools for communication. I mean, we're still projecting into the reality, and it still serves if someone says, who are you and what do you do? You know, you could say, well, kind of having a different experience, <laughs> but I'm in service right now as an ascension guide, you know, and I warn everybody at the beginning of my class, I am not always going to be an ascension guide. You know, that's just what I'm doing right now. And as we remain in full acceptance of being here during the ascension, that's, you know, that's a half of the game is just being in full acceptance. Okay, I'm here now. What, what, what am I learning? What am I creating? What am I doing? You know, personally, my, I feel my light signature shifting. Uh-huh. It felt uh, solar for many years, you know, engaging with the solar cosmic Christ, aligning with the sun, aligning with the, you know, the inner suns of Gaia and all this gate work and everything and, beca- and being a projector for the fractalized beingness. But now it's being aligned more with the logos, which is probably a whole different conversation. I don't know if you want to get into that, John, but it's... um you know, there's like a, a a template for pure source-like consciousness that stars take on. And our star has been a sub-logos for, um, you know, for, for the entirety of its existence. And it's about to shift into becoming a more pure expression of a logos, which changes Gaia into a sub-logos, like all this trickle-down effect. But I can feel my light signature shifting so yeah it gets very bizarre to identify yourself as you know a person or divine human or you know all these different titles that we've been (laughs) we've been using and and i feel it's still of course it's still applicable to the realities you know you want to provide service and guidance for people and have them be able to go hey sandra and you can turn around you know but it's it's you know we're feeling the 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 denser magnetics releasing through this activity, you're like, oh, I can let that go. Yeah, I can still engage with it. I can still play with it. But I can let go of the idea or the concept that I am uh, a person in a body on a planet. Hmm. You know what I mean? Well, I, I do, and it, but it's interesting, too, because it's also confusing for the energetic body. Because I, someone will tell me their name, mm-hmm. and I, in my mind, I'm going, that's not your name. It's like, yeah, that's me too. Name, I'm like, yeah, that's, we keep that's having your, that. Really? Yeah. Uh, that's not your name. Um, oh, if you yeah. say so, I'll identify that. It <laughs> makes no sense to me. It's like, okay, no. quote unquote, John Burgos. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, okay. Like, that doesn't yeah, make yeah. sense. <laughs> it's so interesting. You know, something that yeah. I want to touch upon, and I've been having this experience also, and you talked about the. Uh, those of us who have been in that process of allowing and then letting, going with the flow and letting things come in. And for me this year, uh, very palatably has been coming in. It's, there's this whole thing of, of the risk of wanting and it's wanting in a different way. It's not the wanting from pining and the ego structure, but really stepping into, um, I'll call it a leadership role of claiming what's next, even though we're, you know, the the whole timeline conversation is weird, but it's really about (laughs) stepping into the energy that's about to present itself or potentially and saying yes to it and actually falling into what our bodies would think would be rejection if we don't achieve it. But there's a claiming process going on for me, a, a different way of stepping forward that isn't just about allowing and being with the flow anymore. Yeah, and John, I feel this is evidence of unity, consciousness in action. Because I too, you'll feel that desire to create something, but there's no emotional attachment to it whatsoever. Mm-hmm. It might happen, might not happen. Highest good, let it let it present. You know, show me. You know, always asking. Uh, you know, higher self, the boss. You know, just just show me. You know, is, is this applicable? Is it? And but the the thing is. With this lack of um, identity, you know, as the identity falls away and we, we flow into this unity consciousness, 
we're seeing the co-creation getting threaded out through the human heart grid. And it's, it's interesting to watch because, you know, if you have attachment to an idea as being yours, my creation, my book, my website or whatever, that that's you know it's, it, it's you can't you, you can't really can't approach it from from that uh, linear point of view any longer because we're starting to see as um, as this creator state of consciousness you know my my guides have called it creator state of consciousness as this creator state of consciousness steps forward and we start flowing into unity consciousness you realize that all the ideas all the creations. All those desires and everything are a reflection of this big pool of humanity. And if you release an idea in into the field, you know, I'm constantly releasing, you know, like, wow, that's a really great idea. That's a great concept. That's something that um, could be created. And you feed it out into the field. This is what we're doing with Unity Meditations, too. Feeding that out into the field, then someone on the other side of the planet might pick it up and whether they think it's their own idea or not, it doesn't matter. But it's this, it's this manifestation in this, um, in this new earth experience that's becoming very, uh, palpable, brilliant, radiant, beautiful to me. And I see the elegance of that too. It's like, wow, we're all flowing into this collective humanity and without the attachment to Something being your idea could have come from another side of the grid, could have come from another planet, could have come from another galaxy, could have come from, you know, another aspect or whatever. But it's all this beautiful flow. And to, to me, that is the, the beginnings of truly uh, understanding what creator state of consciousness, source consciousness is like. Because up, up until now, you know, we've had our moments of feeling oneness. You know, if you're a meditator, you've had those experiences where it's like, wow, I'm everything. And and everything goes away, just void, stillness. It's like when you when you get to the core of it, it feels like nothing's there. <laughs> you know, it's just really beautiful. And then you kind of you kind of pass through that that stillness and that void and you you start to see all all the fractals interacting with each other and and in you know our own little our little world here on Gaia you can start to uh, see how that new earth experience is bleeding through into these realities again the the bandwidth you know the separation is uh, is dissolving at a very quick rate and because we have what we call primary Christed timelines um, available since the since last September uh, that bleed through, that dimensional bleed through of those, uh, those dynamics and ways of creating and the collective co-creating and unity consciousness are, are coming to us. And we're having these little individual revelations of like, huh, there's all these like, it feels like creation is just boundless. Mm-hmm. And yet, does anything really need to be manifested? <laughs> you, know, you know, the whole idea of like manifesting, like I really, really want to manifest this. You know, it feels like that's that's not the place to be for these energies right now. And when we get, you know, and we've seen that, you know, you try to force a creation, mm, not going to work. Yeah, no. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't work. But when you get those little go windows, you know, I've experienced this with, you know, attempting to create events you know you're like well throw throw that timeline out there and we'll see what happens and if people respond to it okay there's energy you know uh, coming around but but even beyond the events that i've i've created for you know the the perceptional future um who knows you know i i'm i'm a i'm creating a completely completely 5d events you know, people will buy tickets if they show up. If they don't show up, it doesn't matter. Like, it's like something else is being created uh-huh. with that. So if we can let go of the, it has to happen in a certain way, and, you know, Sandra has to show up, and there has to be a space, and there has to be tickets, and you have to, you know, it's like, you know what, it, we, we're just releasing all of that. It's like, it doesn't matter if you don't have the energy to do that. It doesn't matter if we thought we were going to do one thing and another thing presented. 
it's it's more the way showership of of freedom the way showership of experiencing freedom and showing other people that it's safe and okay to be in the moment and not have these kind of uh the linear habit of how we used to get together or how we used to create and to um and i and i see uh all of these uh, all of the you know even cryptocurrency and explorations into any any new way to do anything um as reflections of unity consciousness and it doesn't matter if you know cryptocurrency or a new healing method um it is applicable or works or sustains the energy uh you know or or it is even um you know applicable it doesn't matter it's the exploration of creativity that is the point right now does that make sense yeah it makes a lot of sense and it's exciting to me because what's coming yeah. up it's, it's so different in any ways that we've created and when you start noticing the magic of how things pop up it really gets fun um, and it starts overriding the old constructs of the mind that expected it a certain way um, because in the allowance you actually realize that you can let go of things that you were holding on to before in in that faith that something um, perhaps better than what you thought can come in can come in or what's exactly meant for you you feel it it's visceral um, it's so amazing. This is, I love this conversation, Sandra. Thank you so much for this because we need this awareness. That's why we need to gather and talk about these things and, and bring it to light because the individual experience can be confusing and way out there. And so we start doubting it, but collectively yeah. having it and amplifying it for one another really allows us to settle into the truth of what's happening for us collectively and individually. So it's so wonderful. And Tina, I want to ask you, what are you excited about? What am I not excited about? Honestly, <laughs> it's so, the the energy and the change, that's the, the, I'm most excited about the unknown. You know, it's like you can't nail it to, oh, I'm most excited about this is what I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to feel, this is what's going to happen. All of that is gone. I am excited about the fact that it is, so unknown and so wide open right now and I can I feel you know it not just intuitively and yeah there's the guidance and the visions and you know all the all the visions that are you know showing us what's going to happen this year it's like oh my gosh but I'm most excited about that unknown thing it feels like we're going to get a glimpse into something that is so out of the box and so beautiful that it's just going to it's going to wash all the old reality away for many of us and that is for me that's the most exciting thing about you know this year this now what's happening right now it's it's all the all the challenges and the what about this and what and how and all that are really getting overwritten this is a, a consistent thing um, that's coming up with uh, with D- working with DNA right now is overriding and overriding all the old realities so that this unknown thing can present. And I love, you know, it's still fun that in our human condition uh, we try to define it and predict it and say this is going to happen and solar flash is it and you know all this stuff. And it's just it's just kind of amusing because we're like. Uh, you know, from from what um, from what is presenting, and the way that I feel, and the way that Gaia feels, and the way that the sun feels, and the stargates, it it's like, oh, you guys are so cute to think that you know what's going to happen. You know, <laughs> it's just, you know, it's just, it's adorable. Oh, you're humans, you know, and you oh, you think of this, you know, drama, and this is going to happen, and that's going to happen. And it feels like it's all just going to get blown away which is wonderful so for me highest excitement is unknown and staying wide open in the moment to it letting go of this on you know we we have no gateway dates this year which is beautiful it means that we've we've 
you know, let go of that completely. It's a one consistent <laughs> open gateway now. So, um, you know, we still have our little unification uh, ceremonies and our Sunday unity meditations and everything like that to, you know, coagulate and focus on uni- unity consciousness and amplify the energies. However, um, it's beautiful to see all the old stuff dropping away, you know, yeah. without judgment. It's like we use that. We always stand upon the shoulders of what we built in order to, you know, reach up to the new thing. So there's no judgment, and I'm really not into um, this kind of, uh, oh, goodness, you know, especially with the online activities, kind of deny the dramatic and judgmental clickbait stuff that seems to increase mm-hmm. whenever the in- energies intensify. It's like so not where we are right now, you know, yeah. and that's and that's been going on for decades, you know, whether it's been online or offline. Um, and it's just, you know, grabbing at consciousness, but it really, it's limiting. It's so limiting. So if we, if we can free ourselves from judging what the first waivers, second waivers, third waivers did or tried to create or whatever, it's like, you know, brothers and sisters, you wouldn't even be in the state of consciousness that you're in right now if it weren't for those folks. So, you know, a little respect. But it's, yeah. um, you know, don't judge what other people created to try to, grok source you know it's like source is literally like god is returning to us and it's it's um it's i feel that it's going to be a a very expansive experience for many of us especially as we let go of time dynamics um and and learn to to navigate in this kind of 5d flow state which is so radiant and beautiful to me and i love that it's challenging you know don't deny that it's challenging but get excited about a new challenge you know how many people were were like oh my gosh i'm bored of the ascension process right you know it's like it's going to be anything but boring this year you know so we can feel that already because there's this deep clearing of the subconscious and the akashic and all this stuff that went on with, you know, the first few weeks of uh, of January. And as we kind of come out of that and, and uh, you know, but now we're going to feel this, this more, um, this radiance of, of what's unfolding. So it's important to cultivate this rich inner life and get to know your own personal universe as it changes because it's a reflection of what's happening on a, you know, inter-universal, multi-universal level. But the upgrades are strong and consistent. So we just, uh, you know, approach it moment to moment. What habits must be changed in this now in order to create change? Pretty simple. Mm. Pretty simple, but if we remember if we <laughs> and if we practice, <laughs> right. practice, yeah, you know, keep those heart open, right? And mm-hmm. Sandra, with that, it's it's so wonderful connecting with you, and and thank you for bringing light um, to these experiences. It's so it's it's. I see you going through a different role. Also, it's like you're going from mm-hmm. like having to be a trailblazer to really being in co-creation. It's like a little relaxed state, still carrying that leadership role and still trailblazing, but it's in a it's. I don't. I want. I don't want to say it's quite. It's not quite as urgent. It's. It's almost like you get to enjoy so much more than you have before because there's a co-creative process coming in that there perhaps wasn't felt in the same way before. Mm-hmm. And it's so beautiful to witness. Yeah, kind of shifting from that urgency to flow. It's just like, and especially after what happened in December, it was just like, oh, different trajectory. We're done. You know, we're complete yeah. with all that. Urgency. You're done, yeah. Oh my gosh, and everything. You know, it's just like, oh, okay. Do you still want to be here? Yeah, that'd be cool. So it, there's just why so would you much want to live more. now, right? <laughs> I know. I was, and that was, you know, one of the one of the thoughts during that whole car accident. It was like, wait a second, I want to experience this through the physical. So it's yeah, 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 all that. But it, but it is beautiful to have this conversation with you, quote unquote, John Burgos, um, <laughs> because it just feel like, you know, a couple of stars flickering, having a conversation somewhere in the corner of the universe. And, you know, in this reality, it looks like we're having a conversation. So it's beautiful to connect with you in that way. 
Uh, thank you so much. And for everyone listening on the call, on the replay, thank all of you um, for being the stars that you are and in, 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 in doing your little flicker dance with us as well. It's so beautiful <laughs> to receive that. Um, and it's with that to us and all of you, a huge hug. All my love. And I look forward to seeing you on the next call. Have a fantastic day.